Hi there, it's Sasia, and you're about to see a full IELTS speaking mock test with a candidate from France. I believe that his score is band 8.5. After the exam, you hear some feedback on Olivia's performance and some tips for you. Okay, let's get started. Hi, my name is Asia. Welcome to this IELTS speaking exam. I will be your examiner today. For marking purposes, I'm going to record this interview. Is it okay with you? Hi, Asia. Okay, yes, yeah, sure. Thank you. First of all, let me ask you some questions for identification purposes. What is your full name? My name is Olivier Miard. Thank you. And um, do you have your passport with you? Yes, yeah, sure. Can I have a look? Please. Thank you. Thank you, Olivia. Where are you from? I'm originally from Paris. Thank you. Okay, there will be three parts in this exam, and before each part, I will give you instructions. Are you ready to begin? Yes, sure. In this first part, I will ask you some questions about yourself. So please tell me, are you from a town or a village? Uh, that's an interesting question. Uh, I, I was born in, uh, I would say, a village uh, in the suburb of Paris. And uh, on the other hand, it's part of the greater Paris uh, suburban area. So it's not a village in the middle of nowhere. Um, so I would say a town. Okay. What kind of jobs do people do in this town? Um, I don't know many people in this town, to be honest. <laughs> um, I guess very typical mix of professions that would be expected from uh, people in that suburban part of Paris. So some public service, some, uh, some uh, commercial activities, and then um, anything else that uh, would be typical of a town in that part. Okay, thank you. Would you like to live there in the future? No, I would think it's uh, a little bit remote and far from what I consider home today, um, which is which is not anywhere near Paris or suburban Paris. Thank you. What is your favorite wild animal? Oh, um, the fox, because I like to see them around. Where um, I live in London. I like to have them wandering around and making me feel that despite being in Greater London, uh, there is a part of wildlife around me that is uh, more impressive than simply mice and, and rats. What do you like about it? Mm, I find them cute. I think that uh, the color and their attitude is uh, is interesting and the fact that they can be very different from one another uh, sometimes extremely shy and departing as soon as i show my face in any corner of any street and some other times simply crossing the street in front of me a few meters away uh, behaving like i did not exist Okay, and um, do you think it's a good thing that people keep animals in zoos? Uh, well, yes, provided that they are kept in good conditions and, uh, and that there is no particular harm uh, done to them, which might be the case in certain regions of the world. Um, but I think in, in Europe, Typically, it's an opportunity for uh, 
people who, who cannot travel far to actually see uh, the wildlife uh, as it is in uh, as, it, as it could look like in its natural habitat uh, very close or reasonably close to their home giving them the opportunity to have access to that wildlife okay thank you uh, let's talk about the next topic have you ever visited a farm uh, yes that was a very long time ago when I was at, at school in France it's called um, uh, the green class and it's a day out uh, in a farm outside Paris where we are being uh, we were being explained um, all the businesses and, and intricacies and activities around the farm. And although I was very young, I actually still uh, remember some of it. And I did enjoy that, that day out. Yes. Thank you. Why is farming important? The short answer, uh, I would say because people need to eat and we need to produce the food that we need to eat. And as, as a topic in general, I think it's important from a political standpoint that people need to ensure that the production of food is appropriate, um, of a good standard, healthy, and sufficient to feed the, the population of a region. Okay, thank you. This is the end of part one. Now we're moving to part two. Okay. In the second part, I will give you a card with a question and several sub-questions. You will need to talk about this topic for one to two minutes. Okay. And you have one minute to prepare your answer. Okay. You can make notes if you wish. Thank you. Okay. I will tell you when to turn it. Okay, please turn your top. Okay. While Olivia is preparing his answer, I'll let me tell you about a place where you can take a mock speaking test and practice your English speaking skills with native speaking teachers. This is Cambly, the sponsor of today's video. Cambly is an online learning platform where you can take lessons with teachers from the UK, Canada, Australia or other countries. This means that you can practice your speaking and listening skills at the same time and get used to the accent of the country you're going to. You can choose topics for your lessons yourself or take IELTS speaking lessons or even a mock speaking test. Lessons start from just 15 minutes a day, twice a week, and you can take them at any time that suits you. I have a link that will give you a 10-minute class for free. If you like it, you can subscribe with an extra discount. You save the most if you take a 12-month plan. And if you change your mind, you can cancel your subscription and get a refund. I really encourage you to take your free lesson while it's available. All the links are in the video description box below. And now it's time to return to our exam. Okay. Remember, you have one to two minutes. And don't worry if I stop you. I will tell you when your time is up. Please start talking now. Okay, um, so the conversation um, was uh, taking place um, at my physics exam at university. And um, exams are always uh, uh, an intense experience. And uh, so this, this exam was uh, verbal. Um, and so I I remember it because it went beyond uh, the context of the the topic that I was meant to to master, um, and it was the question I picked was about 
light transmission in solids and fluids and and gas and um, and how uh, light behaves uh, in these and um, and I found it um, interesting as a topic uh, and, and I scored very well. I, I was also lucky with picking a question that I very much liked that part of that physics course um, and the um, uh, the professor de Haas, um then told me that I did very well at the end and, um, and and I responded that I was not actually finished and I could tell him more such that like why for example the the, the sky is blue and why is it not black even though the space behind it is black and um, and, um, and he told me that that's something I should uh, I should keep uh, to tell my girlfriend because it's a it's a romantic uh, a romantic um, uh, aspect of the course and that we had no time to to discuss it uh, anymore in the context of the exam and that in any case he was not my girlfriend so <laughs> that I should keep that for later so yeah that that's something I will always remember okay your time is up thank you in a conversation do you prefer listening or talking? Um, I would say that I'm typically more a listener um, but I also like to give my view and my opinion um, but in the in the right balance between listening and talking I, um, I like to have all the facts at hand and be able to formulate a complete an informed opinion based on, on a complete view of the situation. Thank so you. I will. Yeah. Thank you. I think it's time to move to part three. We've been talking about a conversation. Now I'd like to ask you some questions about media and communication in general. Do you think the way people communicate has changed over the last twenty years? Um. Yes, very much so. I I believe that uh, the emergence of technology and uh, new communication means uh, have have changed uh, significantly the way people do uh, communicate, and um, that's that's both I think having an impact on the on the channels, the the the, the means used to communicate, and the substance of what and how uh, they, they communicate, the tone of the communication. Uh, so definitely a, a, a significant acceleration of, um, of communication. Uh, a speed of communication is now uh, much uh, faster than, than it used to be in the past. And, um, and the, the nature of the communication is also much more immediate and reactive and spontaneous than it used to be. Um, Is it a good thing? Um, it has advantages in, in the efficiency of the whole process in the sense that faster communication makes any business around it actually um, uh, occurring uh, in a, in a, in a, at a faster speed, which is good for, for productivity and for business. But it, it also has uh, some, some drawbacks in the sense that people may tend to overreact or express their opinion without taking a step back and uh, do it in a way, for example, on Twitter or some other uh, live channels uh, in a way that is based on a heated reaction and that they may regret um, later on. Um, thinking that if they took a step back and saw the holistic situation through, they may have uh, either not said or written the thing, but um, or, or, or perhaps say something else um, less um, less controversial in, in many instances. Okay. Do you think people can trust everything they read in the media? No, and that's that's a good point because the. Um, the fact that so many people now have access to um, publishing whatever they want to say 
uh, with very low latency um, means that the readers on the other side have uh, a multitude of uh, information coming their way and it's increasingly difficult for the audience, for the, the target readership to actually balance what is um, either subjective, objective, true, false, who to trust and we probably have a, an increasing problem in, in today's world where whereby um, a large number of people um, don't, are not sure uh, what source of information to trust and, and what to believe as a result and cannot really make a, an informed decision uh, because they are receiving mixed uh, accurate and inaccurate information and opinions that um, they, they may or may not share. Uh, do you think fake news is a real problem? Yes, so in the uh, context of what I, uh, I just um, explained, uh, I think that there is a lot of what, what is called fake news in the sense that either news being put very quickly, very easily by anyone on the internet or on a, on a visible um, medium uh, can be false or inaccurate and it, it may actually be uh, deliberate or, uh, or simply um, uh, not intended um, and the, the impact is unfortunately the same that um, people may be tempted to believe things that are inaccurate um, and sometimes maliciously uh, communicated by some uh, uh, by some uh, some bodies uh, to to influence the opinion of um, of the population. It can happen in in the context of votes, elections, uh, in other contexts. Okay, thank you. This is the end of part three and the end of the speaking exam. Olivia, thank you for your time today. And good luck with the rest of your exam. Thank you, Asya. Have a nice day. You too. Bye. Thank you. So, what do you think about Olivia's performance? I think he did really well. Perhaps his answers were not as smooth, as perfect as some sample mock tests you can find on YouTube, but they were real. He had no idea what the questions would be, he didn't rehearse his answers. He heard them for the first time and he delivered answers. And as a serious adult man, he was caught out by some questions such as what is your favorite wild animal? And sometimes he hesitated and he thought about what he wanted to say, but that is not a problem. Even for band nine, you can hesitate if these hesitations are content related. IELTS examiners check if you hesitate because you can't find a word in English or you are thinking what verb tense you need to use or if you are just thinking what you actually want to say. Examiners are real people and they understand that sometimes it's just difficult to find what to say. So that is not a problem. Olivia answered all the questions precisely, fully. All his answers were straight to the point and he expanded them and he went into detail. And that's where he could use more complex vocabulary. For example, did you notice that in part two, uh, his topic was about a conversation, but he started talking about some physics terms and he knew what they're called. And that really shows that mm, his vocabulary is really wide and he can use it very naturally. He can express all his thoughts and ideas in English naturally. His grammatical range was really wide too. Even in part one, at some points, he used really complex structures. Uh, for example, the past continuous passive. And he didn't make any pause before saying the phrase. It just came out in a flow automatically. And that again shows the fluency and the grammatical range. As for his pronunciation, perhaps you could hear his French accent. 
I find it very cute and it's not a problem. IELTS examiners can hear your accent. The criterion, the requirement is whether the examiner needs to make an effort to understand you or they can understand you effortlessly. Of course, today all exams are taken in masks. So that means the, the examiner will not be able to see your lips and you need to speak even more clearly and uh, a little bit more loud than you would naturally. I think a really good thing while you're preparing for your speaking exam is to take a mock exam and record yourself on video and then watch this video and check. Could you easily understand yourself? If not, think what you could improve. At the end of the day, that's only your performance during the exam that matters, so make sure that you speak loud, clear, and you look at the examiner even if the examiner is not looking back at you. You can learn how to meet all the requirements that IELTS examiners use to assess your answers and how to perform better during your exam in my online course called IELTS Speaking Boost. It also includes some practice tests that you can take on your own to get used to the exam format. If you'd like to take some mock speaking tests with a native speaking teacher, check out Cambly. All the links are in the video description box below. In IELTS speaking test, you'll feel more confident if you know exactly what to expect on the day. And in this video, I talked about how to introduce yourself correctly and make a great first impression. Please watch it and thank you for being with me today. Good luck with your preparation and your exam.